Purchasing an RV can be super expensive and often price has little to do with the quality of how it's built. Plus, there's usually a compromise in any RV of getting exactly what you want. Many people have decided to build their own custom RVs. That way they're able to control the quality and how much it costs to build. We're going to show you one couple who's done just that and they enjoy a full-time life of travel and comfort that suits them just perfectly. On this episode of Roaming with Rosie. Hey Roamers, it's Jamie back at you. I'm here with Mike and Nisha from Worth Every Mile and we're going to check out their really cool self-built trailer that they travel around in and camp in. A couple years ago, we decided that we wanted to change our life up. So we started looking into it and decided we wanted to full-time travel. So we sold our houses. What was your initial rig, the RV that you had? It was a 43-foot Keystone Rapporter toy hauler. Okay. Uh, we couldn't get a lot of places. We like to boondock mostly, so that's why we chose to go smaller. We decided to build our own out of a enclosed trailer and that's where we're at now and we just built it the way we wanted to build it. They built all of it so it was initially a 20-foot toy hauler correct? Just or a car, car, car hauler. Car hauler. Car hauler. Yep. Right and they built it on themselves they didn't have anybody come in and do it for them. So, Come on into our home. Bad. I'll try it all over. Yep, couple steps up. <laughs> <laughs> so um, back here, we have a couple functions in the back end of it. Unfortunately, we do have a height issue, so Mike does have to duck in this area. But I'm five four, and I can fit fine. This is our king size bed above us. We created a pulley system that. Uh, we use our 120 winch on that we can plug in with our solar so we don't have to start our generator or anything and operate it with the remote to go up or down. And every day we put the bed up so we can utilize all the space under here for living. So we built our couch, it's got storage underneath it. It also can pull out and both cushions can be flat and you can lay down. And then Mike has an office space that he can edit the videos and then this folds down to the wall. So when we travel or put the bed down, it's sucked up into the wall. So when we travel, the smart car rides right here underneath the bed. And on the bed system right here, we have safety pins. So when we raise the bed up, we always put the pins in and then when we travel we also put the pins in and then we have the little pin that goes into the hole here. The nice surprise back here, there's our deck with the AstroTurf. And then we can adjust the curtains anyway. And then we also put um, strips of grip tape so when we drive the car in we have a pathway and we don't have to guess every time to get in here. If you know full timing, you need as much storage as you possibly can get. Nice. So this whole area has storage and like this one we can access with the bed down or up. It doesn't matter. It's got the little lip right here and we can get into that one. And then there's storage underneath this whole couch that we just slide this out and lift the other section up and we can access all the storage under here. So one of the great benefits of building it ourselves, we had key components that we wanted to make sure we wanted. So we wanted a lot of clothing storage. So this is a container for our shoes. And then each of us has three of these containers um, for clothes. And then each of us have drawers 
that are this deep divided into three for more clothes. And then down here we have a tote for all of our swimwear. And when we travel, we just latch these. And then I have a bungee from down here and I just clip it here just to make sure nothing comes out. And then this is all of our hanging storage. Right. So we have plenty of room here. I have my collection of all the channels that I've met. So I got the stickers on this side and all the business cards over here. So again, we utilized all the storage options we could. And for travel, we have the bungee cords. It's pretty easy to access. You just take it off, you pull out what you need, put it back, and then just bungee it back and it's safe to travel. Um, I also wanted to install this little shelf, so if I want to do my hair or makeup, I have a flat surface, I have an outlet, and when I'm done, I just click it, and it's right against the wall. The projects I had to step up and do if I wanted it done was the kitchen. So all the backsplashes, paint sticks that I hand painted and then I cut and air nailed onto the wall. And then the mountains I cut and routed the back side so we could put um, strips of LED lights. So I can actually change the color, I can sync it to music and it just kind of gives it a nice lighting like at night if you just want something to see where you're going. And this wall is wood shims that I hand painted and then we just uh, air nailed again to the wall. This pattern was very complicated so the other wall I did with wood shims I made a simple pattern. <laughs> we wanted a simple countertop that was lightweight so we just Craig jigged on the back side um, wood planks and then I stained and sealed the countertops. So this whole cabinet uh, is our pantry, which is very deep. I can barely reach the back stuff in it, but we wanted as much food storage as possible when we boomed off. Uh, it's life proof flooring. We're kind of testing it to see how it does with driving the car on it. Gotcha. We used to have a sticker state map and we wanted to change things up. So Mike's brother made us this and I use um, ink pens. So each year we have different stops and routes and then I just map it out. And then that way we can have a visual of where we've been. So we got a little more storage, his brother thought, for uh, hanging things and then all my pins. And I love these magnetic screens. Oh yes. Because we had French doors in our house and we could never figure out. You can't really have a sliding screen because mm -mm. the doors opened out. So in the front here we have just the rack and then here's the outside unit for the mini split and then we have double 30 uh, 30 pound propane tank. Also this area right in here <laughs> is where the generator rides. Oh, okay. so, so when that's we go, you, gotcha. go down the road, it's in here. So then it puts all that weight up here. Up front, right, where you right. want it. Now did you, did you weld all this yourself? Or? Yes. Okay, yeah, so you I welded all everything. that. So up there we have a safari rack off of, uh, so I built the roof racks to tie everything in and then you got the storage boxes and then I actually built this front section specifically so I can get up there so we actually don't have to have a ladder oh, wow. yeah so, I can see how it kind of steps up yeah right so I can just walk right up it like that so now I can access all these compartments without putting the ladder up every time so here is an access door so to access our uh, water pump and our valves and everything for our water tank because our water tank is actually right behind here mm -hmm. inside and then we have our water fill this is the water fill plus the 50 amp service which we have to the generator right now but if we went to our RV park we can just plug 50 amp right into it okay so that's our 50 amp service 
You guys must be the smallest 50 amp plug-in anywhere. Go yeah. big or go home. Yeah. <laughs> here's our our uh, drain for our black and our gray. And then also we have the tank flush for a black tank, just like regular RVs do. And then underneath, we have more insulation. So underneath, there's actually a uh, concrete blanket that you use in the winter time when you pour concrete it, and it's a R6 value. So you put that concrete blanket in that, in, that's the whole underbelly of this. So it adds more insulation to the tanks, everything. When we got the, this trailer, it used to sit really low. It would be like this body line would be down here. So we did in here, I welded in blocks. This has torsion axle suspension. So I put uh, two by three inch blocks. I took, cut the suspension, put those in, re-welded it all back up. And then we went with bigger tires. And that's also for the clearance. So now we have clearance for the drain, for our tanks, and just overall clearance so you're not dragging it through everything. We also put uh, four of these 7500 7, stabilizing jacks. You're not supposed to lift the camper with it, but it actually could do it if you wanted. But it makes it quite a bit more stable. Yeah. The concrete blanket that we made to go underneath it, we wrapped it with a billboard sign. You can buy the billboard signs used and it's just 100% waterproof and everything and made for the elements. And the underbelly also has aluminum strap that secures it up to the frame all the way around the trailer. Right. These brackets here are for when you bring down the, the tailgate, you know, to load the car in and out. And then I built these to support, and these just pin in right here. And then when it comes down, it just sits like a, you know, it's just like the cargo, uh, I mean, the uh, toy haulers and they have that deck on the back, so we have a deck on the back of ours also. And then up here, those will come out and we slide those out so we can put an awning over it. On top of the roof, we put uh, six 190 watt panels. We have a 3000 watt inverter and that's how we do off-grid camping. So right now the panels are kicking out 700 watts but we're still getting 290 to the battery bank. So it's only pulling about 500 watts right now. Right. So it's pulling 20 amps from the inverter right now. That's how you also, you can tell what, it, what you know, when it's on. And which GoPower one do you have? Uh, 3000. Okay. Stand that thing's in, silent, man. Stand in front of it. Whoa, <laughs> that is cold, man. <laughs> Yeah, when you hit it to turbo mode. Yeah. So that's the. This will be the loudest it'll get. And how many square feet will this thing? It's supposed to do 400. 400? Yeah. It's the smallest one we could find, a 9,000 BTU. Yeah. It's the smallest one we could find, but it's rated for 400 square feet. And if you want to follow our channel, we'll be putting out videos step by step of the process. That we oh, did. that's cool. The yeah. process. Thanks so much, Mike and Nisha, for welcoming us into your tiny rolling home. And for more details on how they built their RV and their travels, there's a link in the description below to their YouTube channel, Worth Every Mile. And thank you for watching this episode of Roaming with Rosie. If you think this information will be of value to someone that you know, we would love to have you share it with them. In the description, you'll also find links some offering discounts and coupons to products and services we use and recommend. We may receive a small commission when you use those links, but it helps us to offset the cost of producing these videos. And if you want to watch more Roaming with Rosie videos, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And also hit that bell because that's the best way you'll be notified each time we upload a video. And make sure to leave a comment, that way you can be part of the conversation. Until next time. See we'll ya. see you.